بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرلی صدری و یسرلی عمری والم لسانی یب کہو کولی ون آئی واز اے اسٹوڈنٹ ان فوتی آرکیٹیکچر ایٹ این سی وی ہیڈ دا آغ خان ایوارڈ اینڈ دیٹ ایوارڈ واز گون ٹو دا بیسٹ اسلامک پیس آف آرکیٹیکچر And from that time, my quest as to what makes it Islamic. So my journey started from that period when I was a fourth year student. And subsequently, I had the honor to meet great exponents of Islamic Sufism like uh, Hazrat Abu Bakr Sirajuddin, commonly known as Martin Lynx. Then I had the pleasure also and my, f uh, my privilege to meet Sayyid Hussain Nasser from whom I was able to grasp the inner meanings of Islamic architecture and arts. And basically, I, these are the books which I have researched to come up with this lecture. This lecture was prepared for a conference which was held in Iran, Islamic Conference of Art and Architecture. And subsequently, it was held also in Delhi and then in Pakistan, Lahore at NCA. So this is just one of the lectures prepared for it. Now my journey started, as I mentioned, uh, with the quest, what makes it Islamic? So if you read the Quran, and the hadith, hadith, you would find no guidance about there being a dome or an arch or a minaret. And at a time when the Prophet built his mosque, it was made with date palms and mud. So what really was the impetus which gave its character to Islamic art and architecture? So my journey started, I found all guidelines pertaining to sustainable aspect of the project. That is, be mindful of your resources, live humbly, be uh, conscious about your usage of water. You are not supposed to make ostentatious houses. And they were the principles all pertaining to sustainable aspect of the project. So, my quest began with that. I said, nowhere, nowhere in the Quran or the Sunnah is written that you have to build a dome or an arch. So, what was the underlying um, impetus which gave it its character? Now, the whole paper is a research and an answer to that question. I, know, I am no one to be able to give you an opinion about it on myself. It comes from the books I have been researching and the answer to these questions come from eminent writers who have written books on these. So, this lecture was prepared for a conference in um, Iran and it started with the prophetic art. So, my um, subject was Islamic tiles. Now, what makes it Islamic is the answer to this question. How does this happen about? A craftsman normally uh, was working in guilds and they belong to some Sufic orders and they were given a rigorous training to mold their souls. And when they came out of the Khalwat, it honed that talent to such an extent that the kind of things they produce is even mind boggling for me to even copy them. So, basically uh, a Sufi undergoes a very rigorous training to be able to become a craftsman which can execute such uh, masterpieces of Islamic art and architecture. And since his personality was molded, it, it was reflected in the kinds of things he produced. It had 
beauty, peace, serenity and balance. Then art was not for um, basically for art's sake, it was not a masterpiece with a signature associated with it and the price tag was because of the signature and the marketing on what kind of a great artist this is. A Sufi person which produced such masterpieces were the most humble, pe uh, most humble people and they seldom s signed their work. Very, very, um, in very few cases like the Taj Mahal or um, some um, other buildings, there was a signature, but it was also associated with the feeble Nazis. Uh, sign So they were the most humble people, and by being humble, they were blessed with so many things from Allah. Another um, identifying feature of um, uh, Islamic art and architecture was that it was utilitarian, it was beautiful and contemplated in nature. So that when you see them, it reminded you of some aspect of religion and it was a constant reminder that whenever you look at them, you find a message given to you. Another thing which was common was there was a link between all um, different Islamic schools and it had a connection between them. So, this, because the source was the same, the inspiration was the same and there was a link between all art and architecture. So, here is a Sufi who is in his khalwat. This is a miniature painting and how a Sufi soul is being molded to be receptive of the divine inspiration from Allah. So, you see the angels giving inspiration to the Sufi person to the Sufi. So, what is Sufism? And this is the answer which I got from the book by um, Hazrat Abu Bakr Sirajuddin and he, he said, if you are sitting by the edge of a seashore and different people look at the waves which are coming in and going and each person sees what he is meant to see. So, if it is an artist, he sees, a, he sees it to be inspiring to make a beautiful painting. An engineer would probably be seeing the power of the waves and how do we harness it to produce electricity maybe. A chemical engineer would see the kind of minerals in the water and how he can um, uh, tap those, but what does a Sufi see? He sees the noor of Allah flowing in to the seashore and the dips in the sand are the receptacles and when the waves come in, they leave the inspiration and the barakat behind according to the dips in the sand, uh, dips in the sand and they recede and then there is a constant ebb and flow of the sea waves. And he sees the sea waves as a noor of Allah coming in to bless. So, the greater the receptacle, the more you are able to hold on to the barakah. Now, if you take Sufism as the tariqat, so if you transform the concept of Sufi into a wheel, the rim is the sharia, which is the law and which is the Tawheed, the Salat, Swam, Zakat and Hajj. The different spokes are the different uh, belonging to the different uh, schools of the, uh, uh, Sufism, which is Naqshbandi, Chisti, Qadri, the different schools of uh, Sufi orders. And the hub is 
the haqeeqat or the but the source of all this is the quran and the sunnah which is the haqeeqat now if you are not standing on the rim that means you uh, and you there are sufi orders also who just call themselves zikri but they do not pray so they are like a spoke which is not anchored to the wheel and hence does not perform any function and initially there were no names to the sufi order it was given to given by a prophet to his close companions like hazrat abu abu bakar in the gare sor which was the khafi zikr it was given to hazrat ali it was given to hazrat umar and spiritually linked also to hazrat awais kidney who had not even seen the holy prophet but he knew exactly how he looked like and so did our prophet knew about him so it was like a spiritual connection but if you are not anchor to the wheel if you do not stand on the tenets given by islam you are like a spoke which does not perform any function now if you if you take the same symbol and you transform it like islam is a universal religion and th- this i'm quoting from the quran for each we have appointed a law and a path and if god had wished he would have made you one people but he had made you as you are that he may put you to the test in what he has given you so why with one another in good works unto god he will you all be brought back and he will then tell you about those things wherein you differed but islam is a re- universal religion i mean the, the hazrat musa was also given um, a shariat and a tariqat so was christianity and buddhism and hinduism but they were all told about the coming of a prophet peace be upon him and because our prophet huzur sai sallam was rahmatul lil alamin so he was basically meant for the whole world and he encompass the laws and the tariqat in a form which was incorruptible because allah had given the undertaking that i am the protector of the quran so there's in no way would be there any input which is man made like in christianity they called hazrat isa as a son of god which came much later on by a vision of saint pauls but it was not given in the in the bible so these sort of corruptions came later on but islam is there in its purest form in hadith and the quran now if you take a prophetic barka as the source and you transform this wheel into the different components of islamic art and architecture then you would find there's a common link which is the rim and th- some things which originate in literature passes on to architecture to ceramics to woodwork to and of course calligraphy is also one thing which links all islamic art and architecture together now for instance this I, we are talking about symbolism in um, islamic art there's a symbol of the cypress tree you find them in gardens you find them in miniature paintings you find them in prayer rugs you find them in tiles now what message does it convey because there must be some subtle message which is been given which we cannot which we have lost over time and even most of the people i have talked with are not really familiar with the message it represents an upright muslim because it has both the male and the female components it's aspiring to reach towards heaven now this is the message which is is being passed on as a feature of islamic art and architecture but by and large the meaning is lost on us 
so also the symbol of the lamp the lamp is a, a beacon of light and we should be training ourselves to be such a light zindagi ho shamma ki surat khudaya meri to like the oil in the lamp is your life span and while you are living your life should be like a beacon of light and light the path of others so we found we find this in prayer rugs in tiles in stucco in mosque but it has a subtle meaning and this symbol of um lamp is not only common in uh, islamic architecture is also common in buddhism in christianity and now normally when one sees a paisley and you normally find it in textile very seldom in uh, miniature paintings or tiles but what does it signify i mean its meaning was by and large lost on us so the indians call it ambi which is like a mango but it's definitely not that it is it represents an upright muslim which is the cypress tree and when the wind blow that is the will of allah it bows its head in submission and it turns into a paisley so use of symbols of vehicles of contemplation you see um, the universe is symbolized by the tree which has its root and its branches spread in heaven also the cosmic tree tuba god has planted it with his own hands and is breathed his and he breathed his spirit into it a tree is also a symbol of wisdom its roots in meditation and bears the fruit of the spirit so although you can recognize the different um styles of tiles where it has its own region but the message given to all different um the message is the same in all different uh, forms of arts this is the turkish uh, tile in top copy and the identifying feature of turkish tiles is basically that it has stiff leaves and normally they use carnations and tulips as the flower motif to deliver the message this is also another tree and these are the same isnik tiles which i was talking about and this is in shiraz another form is in the door jam which signifies the tree trunk rising from a vase then you have the symbol of the cobweb mentioned in the quran the parable of those who take protectors other than allah is that of a spider who builds itself a house but truly the flimsiest of houses is the spider house if they but knew this is the dome in tata like i mentioned before the symbol of the lamp and this is a quotation from surah nur so you find the symbols in different tile forms also and since the basic um, guidelines given to us by the quran and sunnah is that it should not be iconic there should be no figurative and to represent a prophet normally we use the footprints of our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam
the symbol emanating from a point. When Allah intends anything to be, He just has to say kun and it happens. So, even if you are talking about the big bang theory, it is was a dot and then it man manifested into stars and planets. Now, this sort of symbolism is represented in the dome. And my most favorite mosque is the Sheikh Lutfullah's mosque, which I think even if I try my best to and devote my whole life to copying it, I would not be able to do that. Now, forms which exist were given a symbolic meaning. It is not that the dome was invented by the Muslims or the minaret was, uh, minaret was probably uh, uh, invented, but because of the, uh, the symbolism associated with it was that the dome represented the Jamal of Allah and the minaret the Jalal of Allah. Now, since these symbols were repeated so often, they came to be associated with Islamic art and architecture, but without us understanding the meaning behind it. Now, this is what I was talking about. It has been you know designed at an age where there were no computers and you imagine the kind of three dimensional um, design and it is made of tiles and these small tiles join to make the whole dome. Now, what does a Persian art depict? It depicts the flame in one's heart aspiring to reach towards heaven. The Moroccan arch, it represents looking inward into your heart to correct your own fault. Now, this is the Jali work which is from different sc um, schools of um, Islamic art and this represents the Fana and Baka principles of Islam. Fana is when you inhalate yourself and then you dawn upon the realities, the divine realities. And normally you have these in mosque, because the mosque is a void. It represents basically a person who has been emptied of all desires and then his body is transformed by the nur of Allah. So, a mosque is also you know, devoid of any furniture. So, when you have the light coming in into the mosque, it represents the nur of Allah descending into the space. The mihrab is also like a niche where the word of Allah, from where the word of Allah spreads to the whole mosque. And basically, all orientation is towards the Kaaba. So, that is in a way also uniting all the Muslims together to one pivot. The Murkanas, which is very common in Moroccan architecture, and uh, probably the culmination of it is in the Alhamdra, this represents the Noor of Allah descending on the earth. Now, the eight pointed star normally is associated with Hazrat Suleiman. The six pointed star is the star of David, which has been uh, adopted by Israel. So, so, now we have nothing to do with it, but basically all stars have different meanings and have been used in 
Islamic art and architecture, but the most common um, uh, star which is used is the oct uh, eight sided octagon, which is normally has been adapted by the Muslims as their star which is repeated. It also represents the breadth of the compassionate. Now, within this you have different um, symbols also, the symbols of the lion, the simurg all encompassed in one tile work. Then, then you have the symbol of the cypress tree, which I mentioned earlier is an upright Muslim aspiring to reach towards heaven. Now, this style work has a lot of uh, different um, symbols, one is the symbol of the lamb, the cypress tree, the calligraphy and the tree of life. Now, what does an arabesque represent? It represents the path of a novice who embarks on the Sufic journey and he is in a state of hal. He does not know where his path leads. He may sometime be rewarded with a prophetic dream or an inspiration. So, it is the path of a novice like the hal which you get when you sometimes when you are listening to a Qawwali or the or what uh, was um, what happened was to basically Maulana room the whirling of the dervish when he heard the tinkling of the beat of the sonar when he was turning his gold into gold leaf. So, that sort of hal is something which triggers a chord in your personality and you become in a state of bewilderment, but which is not a maqam. It is a path, but it is not a station. Now, the geometrical patterns are the stations which you acquire after certain rites, and this is there to stay. And the different stars represent the different um, maqams, and they have different meanings also. So, normally you have these Islamic stars which are 8 pointed or 12 pointed and they each have different meanings associated with it. Now, you have symbols from parable like we were looking at the wheel and something emanates from literature, but travels all around the different art forms. So, this symbol of the Simur started from Fariduddin Atas Mantakal Tair which is which when it was written in Persian it was translated into 17 languages, but we are absolutely you know if I talk to 20 people probably one would know about it. We have specially been you know devoid of looking at our own literature and getting inspirations from it. So, the the simurk represent I mean the story of Simic goes like this, a feather was discovered in China and all the world were in awe as to who did it belong to and the hoopoe being the leader calls the um, gathering of the birds and asks them to let's find this bird and make him our king. And when they embark on a journey, the excuses basically which the birds offered were the different excuses not to embark on such a journey. And when finally, 250 birds when they started on this journey, they had to uh, travel through 7 valleys and um, 7 dales to reach the point where they could see the sun. And when they saw the sun, it basically transformed them into Simurk. C is 30 
and murg is the bird. So, that is how the murg word came about and basically is the journey of a Sufi who has gone through all the trials and tribulations and has become a Kamil Sufi and when he has become a Kamil Sufi the negative attributes of his personality which is represented by the pig is in a dead form. So, when we took a trip to Uzbekistan even the guide did not know the meaning of this. So, when I told them the story behind it and the meanings of this dead pig it was quite a revelation for them. And this is when they see the sun and they see that they have been transformed into a simurk and the dead negative attributes in a personality is represented as the pig. And you have simurk in um, carpets which I saw once I saw in Iran, but I could not take a photograph because they would not let me. You have simurk in um, miniature paintings. You have Simurg in salads which we saw in uh, Uzbekistan. So, it was a symbol which was quite often used, but its meaning was lost. Then you have the symbol of the lion which is the active energy rather than just the passive contemplation. And it you normally call Hazrat Ali as a shere khuda. So, it is it, more commonly fo found in um, Iran because uh, Hazrat Ali is represented as a lion and normally the active energy which is the dawning of the sun is represented by the sun rising from his back. Then you have the symbol of the peacock which also uh, represents the glory of Allah. When one sees it and it spreads out its uh, wings, you could see it in its full glory. Calligraphy is probably the most identifying feature of Islamic art and it binds all the different arts together and it is like the pen of Allah which he has written and it represents either it conveys the message of the Quran and Sunnah, it is a divine word by itself and it generates a barqa and used as a talisman for a spiritual aura of the place. So, the three things associated with it, it is identifying, it conveys the message and by its presence it creates a barqa of a holy place. And because uh, Sharia would not allow us to make iconic figures, so this sort of art developed to its fullest because we were not supposed to make anything figurative. So, this was an identifying feature of Islamic art and architecture. This represents the best of a human form. You could see meme, hay, the meme and the dal. So, this is Muhammad and this is how it is represent and it is not my, uh, it is been uh, quoted as such in different books of Islamic tiles. And this was a madrasa in Samarkand. And like you do zikr, you do zikr, you recite the name of Allah. Likewise, it seems as if the building with Allah written all around it is doing zikr by itself. Now, normally you have 
an octagon uh, square base in a mosque and how it transformed into a, a base for a dome. The square represents the material world, the octagon base represents the angelic order and from that the dome ascends. And this is another mosque for its decoration. We just have Muhammad written on it. Now, this is a mosque in um, Fez. Now, not only was the calligraphy, the basins of water was also very symbolic. Like in Alhamra, you see the court of lions, where there are four lions upholding a bowl. Um, basically, they represents the general and the bowl represents the Khalifa and who dispenses charity with ease. So, the water flowing from it is the Barkat and it also represents charity given by the king who, who is upheld by the four generals. Now, you have the Arabis, the Maqams and normally what is written in uh, Alhamra is Ghalib Allah. One thing would be interesting for you also is to see that when a Sufi went from one place to another, he had a whole entourage with him which followed him and that entourage consisted of designers, of tile makers, of masons and as they went from one place to another, the entourage bring, brought their expertise also. And therefore, you find a common link. The material of that place was obviously indigenous to that place, but you find a commonality between um, the, the different um, places. Like Multan is related, it will be very difficult for you to find a link and be able to identify whether this is Multan or this is Khiva. This is the Shah Rukhne Alam Kamazar and who's from which I was inspired to design my own house. So, it is basically the blue tiles. Now, each area had its identifying features. You could identify uh, Turkish tiles from um, Persian art, from Mughal art, but they at the same time they are all linked together. They draw their inspirations, the underlying meaning behind those inspirations is the same, but how they decipher those meanings in their own form is which is giving them the regional identity. This like I mentioned earlier is my most favorite mosque and the more I see it, it is still mind boggling for me how it was constructed and designed and what were the sources of inspiration. Basically, it is an arabesque form and it covers the whole dome. And you see a similarity between that and between the Wazir Khan mosque 
it has the same motives you know the tree of life the cypress tree even at jahangir's too if you hmm. But um, this is more of folk architecture, and Jangi's tomb is Peter Dura, which is marble carved with in, inserted with stone. This is the Thatta Mosque. The same symbols carried forward, and this is the Wakil Mosque in Shiraz. It represents. I mean, uh, Iran has broken away a little by introducing figuratives, and normally this is not a um, thing which is encouraged in Islamic art, but you have it over here. So, this this represents Hazrat Suleiman, which you are not supposed to do, but you have the the angels, the jinns, all in attendance. You also have the hoopo giving him the feedback about uh, uh, Bilki, Hazrat Bilkis. You have a Sufi Buzurg who said he can get you the Takht. So, it basically relates the story, but in iconic forms. And this is the Khans of Kiva. And it is you look at the similarity of this with Shah Rukhne Alam's Mazar. The same, probably, the same sets of people were responsible for both of them. Thank you. Any questions? चीज बताऊं जब मस्जिद नबी भी बनी थी उस जमाने में एक तो रिसोर्सेज नहीं थे उनके पास कि वो इतना वो कर सके लेकिन एट द सेम टाइम दे फॉलोड द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ सस्टेनेबिलिटी मिट्टी से बना था खजूर के درخت थे उस वक्त इस्लाम को मजबूत करना था थ्रू शरीयत तरीकत कर कर के बाद में फिर सूफिक ऑर्डर्स बने फिर उसके बाद मीनिंग्स आई फिर उसके बाद सिलसिले का नाम आया जब अपने हुजूर सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम ने जिक्र दिया था अब हजरत अबू बकर को हजरत अली को उस वक्त उनको एस्टैब्लिश करना था शरीयत को एस्टैब्लिश करना था और तरीकत वाज लिमिटेड टू अ वेरी फ्यू पीपल जिस तरह हजरत अबू बकर सिद्दीक से लेके हजरत सलमान फारसी हजरत सलमान फारसी से uh, Imam Jafar Sadiq, then they have descent from them. Two centuries ago, the names of 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 the Mughal art में कहाँ figurative होते हैं? जो paintings उनकी आती हैं जैसे मतलब manuscript में हाँ manuscript में होती है कई चीजें देखे like Islam को अगर आप शरीयत को follow करें शरीयत means that you live simply you are not supposed to waste water but you see, when the kingdoms came, the Sharia took a back seat and the ostentatious, well, aap ye dekhe, like the Taj Mahal. Uh, this question was asked to me by a student, ke, jab Taj Mahal bana tha, it has all principles of um, Islamic ar architecture, the minaret, the calligraphy, the symbolism, sab kuch tha. but the purpose was not Islamic. Islam does not glorify Muslims. Except, matlab, unless it belongs to a khanka or usse aapko barakat hoti hai. Lekin otherwise, there is simplicity in Islam and there is no kingship and there is no um, transmission of kingdom to the next generation. So, the purpose 
the uh, the workers whose souls was molded who were working on those sites they were all obviously uh, exponents of um, islamic art but the purpose for which it was created was not islamic in my opinion can i have ah sure okay. uh, in in mughal art ki baat ho rahi hai you talking about mughal ah, art acha ah. mughal art me you know uh, the mughals were closer to the persians and persians ah. very early on uh, added the figurative art mm. the like in meydan e shah in the chahal sakun uh, you find uh, uh, figures of uh, you know female uh, figures so very early on uh, they um, started depicting uh, fig figure figures figurative art and uh, mughals being especially after humayun because when humayun fled to persia when he came back he brought mm. a lot of artisans and you know masons and mm. painters and uh, uh, with him to uh, india to tab se phir jo hai ye figurative art jo hai wo mughal art ke andar shuru hua and especially and also because you know the amalgamation of uh, the local uh, indian art along with mm. um, uh, mughal art so we see that in the pahadi in, and uh, also in uh, the miniature uh, mm. uh, illuminations manuscript illuminations and miniature um. painting ab uska bhi ye hai ki like what i heard from sayed hussain nasir he said ke jo miniature paintings thi they were sort of not that they could not make it into a three dimensional form he said they specially made it into a two dimensional yes. form because they are not trying to replicate allah yes to so we specially we gave it a two dimensional form jaise aapko yes. profile yes. nazar aata hai three dimension nahi yes. banate yes. चाहिए इस्लामिक आर्ट में डेट ट्रीज क्यों का क्यों नहीं इतना है और क्या चीज डेट ट्रीज क्यों नहीं है और साइट्रस पीस क्यों नहीं है क्योंकि पुराने तो फिर उनके तरफ तो मौसम का है डेट ट्रीज का है मैं डिमास्कस की जामे मस्जिद देखते हैं मॉस्क ऑफ डिमास्कस यानी वो इतना नहीं है जितना बेटे ये जो सिंबलिज्म आए थे ये मच लेटर आए थे मैं भी ये खुद ये क्वेश्चन मेरे जहन में आया था कि डेट ट्रीज बिकॉज़ अरेबिया में बट इस्लाम इज अ यूनिवर्सल रिलीजन इट इज दे फॉर तो सिम्बलिज्म दिए गए थे प्रॉबली जब इस्लाम इतना फैला था इट बिकेम स्प्रेड ओवर द होल वर्ल्ड तो दिस सिम्बल वॉज टेकन एंड दिस सिम्बल वॉज टेकन एंड रेकनाइज एज बींग एन अप्राइट मुस्लिम पेजली क्यों आया बट है पेजली उसका एक मकसद है एक्सेप्टेड ऑब्वियसली जब मस्जिद बनी थी तो खजूर के दरख्त ही थे तो खजूर के दरख्त की भी अपनी इम्पोर्टेंस है कि, कि अपने हुजूर सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम जब लीन किए थे एक सूखे दरख्त के तने से और जब उनका मेंबर बन गया था तो वो बिलक बिलक के रो रहा था तो अपने हुजूर सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम की जो पार होती थी वो हम बयान भी नहीं कर सकते हैं तो खजूर के दरख्त मतलब उसकी इम्पोर्टेंस है लेकिन ये सिम्बलिज़म जब निकले तो दे व देर इन इस्लामिक गार्डन्स इस्लामिक गार्डन्स तो आपको जो चार बाग का है कि वो जो चार नदी होगी वो लोगों की इंटरप्रटेशन है लेकिन जो इस हाउ दे परसीव अ पैराडाइज टू बी बट इट्स हैज़ कॉमनली बीन रिकगनाइज स्पेशली बाय द पर्शन इन्फ्लुएंस एज एन इस्लामिक गार्डन